the gates of Samino. says vampires are no laughing matter. <laughs> they certainly are. Vampire killers, or, pardon me, but your teeth are in my neck. Jack McGarrett. Sharon Tate. Alfie Bass. Ferdy Main. And Terry Dodds. Two men on a vampire hunt. Simple? They certainly are. Let's give it a shot. See what happens. <laughs> so why this movie? Why um, Fearless? I almost said Killers of the Flower. <laughs> fearless the Fearless Vampire, Vampire Killers. killers. Yeah. 19, what, 60? It was 67, 67. 67. This is where he met Sharon Tate. You know, I have wow. a fa- I do have a fascination with Polanski. I, you know. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to get out of you. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like I like to always say, like, to address the Weinstein in the room before. <laughs> right, right. And you, <laughs> you know, know, I'm. Yeah. I'm comfortable t- going there and, and talking about it and not being, you know what I mean? It's cool. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. You know, and, a lot of and people we get did, all weirded out, right? People away, freak out. You know? And I'm very open about talking about it because, you know, there is, we did an episode recently, Vince and I on Manhattan and we talked about mm-hmm. when we were like, let's just yeah. talk about them. Who yeah. gives a fuck? Let's just, you know, talk about them. And I do feel <laughs> in the scope of all of this and every, you know, from Cosby to Weinstein to everything, I do always put Woody Allen and <laughs> and Polanski in this weird pot for separate reasons, but yeah. I just I but like I the thing that fascinates me with them both, though, regardless of what they did, is just how good they are at what they do. Yeah. Like most of the other people are kind of like they're not that fucking who cares. <laughs> their, their their ovure is not worth yeah exactly over. exactly yeah. but there's yeah. something about these two in the film world that they're just like especially polanski i mean he yeah. has I would amazing ag- 70s and late 60s yeah. films i would agree told i would agree completely and and um the obvious is what polanski did and what he is basically um he's in exile i would say right yeah he's no he exile. left in the late 70s because yeah. he you know he had the sex LAPD with a 13 year old ha- yeah the LAPD have it has an active warrant for him, I believe. And yeah. so he's uh, he fled the, the States and never, never came, never to return. But he he won an Oscar. Yeah, he won in, an Oscar post. Yeah. <laughs> po- yeah. Well, and very post much, flea. very much. It, yeah. Post flea and very much within like our recent past, like within the, the 21st century. It was yeah. like 2002 or something, you know, yeah, so it was for the piano. Um, yeah, and, and the pian the pianist pianist. I'm sorry, pianist, yes, yeah. pianist. But you know, like at that time, we we had not. In other words, I because I remember that Oscars too. Everybody was like, it was yeah, cringe yeah. in the room, you know. But Didn't Steve Martin do a joke, and he was like, yeah. when Polanski won, he's like, cops, there he is, or something like that. <laughs> yeah, when he was not. Yeah, I'm like, you I'm know, not dead, it's so. 
<laughs> the, the, all right. So the, the the three before we get into the movie and the you mm-hmm. know I I think I like it a little bit more than you did, but it isn't one of his greatest. It's not bad. You know, it's, it's, not it's, it's not his best. It's not his best. It's not his best, but it's something interesting <laughs> to talk about him with. So we don't you know. Um, but the three Absolutely. major events in his life. The reason I give him these weird passes is mm-hmm. so as like a five year old, he's in the Holocaust, and his yeah. mom and I believe yeah. his sister as well is like you know burned yeah. to death, and like they're yeah. they're murdered in the Holocaust. So this dude at a young age like this <clears throat> just knows that kind of torture yeah then his wife now i'm not saying Ugh. he was innocent when sharon tate was murdered you know he was cheating on her what do you mean from like well, not saying kill her, but from cheating on her for for supposedly that tape that he had those two guys that were like basically forcing themselves on her he basically made it supposedly he made a sex tape kind of with her with two guys forcing themselves on her now no one knows how true that is That's whoa in the, yeah it's in the tom o'neill book chaos <laughs> And that's oh, when the shit. so I <laughs> how is this I, the first time I'm hearing this? Oh, yeah, no, supposedly now, real quick. I hate to just talk about this the whole time, but real quick, uh, Tom O'Neill, who wrote the book Chaos about the Manson murders and the CIA, the, everything, everything's intertwined. When he mm-hmm. was interviewing Boyosi, he basically asked him for, you know, give me something you know, that nobody's yeah, not yeah. heard of. And he said, he told him this story. He was like, they didn't put this out there because they wanted to protect Sharon, had nothing to do with the case. But yeah. whenever they were clearing out the house, they took eight millimeter film. And on that eight millimeter Oof. film, it is two guys banging Sharon and the guy oh. behind, and against her will, against her will, the guy filming it sounds like Polanski, which is obviously him. Yeah. So yeah. they put the tape, they put the film back and up in like the uh, like attic kind of loft. Yeah. Thing. So they put it wow. back in there. So when wow. Polanski came back, we see those famous pictures of him cleaning the house and everything. Yeah, I guess yeah. the first thing he did was go upstairs and grab <laughs> that film. <laughs> you know, but he, wow. he has that childhood event. Then he has his wife getting murdered. And, you know, and he obviously yeah. has this sadistic kind of, you know, morbid, you know, mm-hmm. sexual thing going on. And mm-hmm. then in the 70s at Jack's house, he's taking yeah. pictures of a 13 year old girl. Something tells me it wasn't her first rodeo. You know, I mean, I don't yeah. know who else she yeah. got with, but Plansky <laughs> was the one that got caught. You know, he he took off yeah. instead of facing, you know, jail time. But, you know, it's like it's hard to judge somebody when they have a life that we couldn't even imagine having since yeah. they were five he years had, old. He... I, I hate giving that as an excuse, though, but, you know. Well, and I, I believe. If I'm if I'm not mistaken, like his mother, like he like he saw her be killed. So it was something like that. It was super super fucking traumatic. Yeah, you know, it yeah. wasn't just like oh, I I we I lost her on the road. We parted ways, and then I heard later that she died. No, I think like like she was killed in front of him. I, they I talk like about it, was, it in that uh, that big yeah. goodbye book about the making of Chinatown mm-hmm. because that's his first movie back in, yeah. in L.A. So they do they talk about that about his mom being taken from him and. You know, I, they say it pretty graphically too. You know, yeah. Well, and so you know, I think it is interesting. Y- you mentioned um, Polanski and and Woody because I think for the purposes of this film, this one is sort of special because he's in it. He this I think is probably and remember I, I haven't seen the Tenant yet, but I think this and this the Tenant are his two big tenant, stars. I think exactly, yeah, like where he's the the lead in it or he's one of the leads in it. And mm-hmm. what I thought was really interesting about this one about vampire killers was that he didn't credit himself in the acting until I think the end, maybe I didn't yeah, just see the end, the end credits. Credit. Correct. Yeah. And so he wasn't, he wasn't credited as being in the film, at least at the opening credited everybody else. And there is something I will say, like you can, you can feel something between he and Sharon in their. I their thought scenes. so too. Yeah. You can feel it. And I, even if it's just because we know what happens between them more or less, you know, mm-hmm. I feel like maybe that's it. We can feel it. And unfortunately, yeah, I know, like you were saying, like this, I, this wasn't my my favorite film of his, I would say. <laughs> but um, I think it came right before me, Rosemary's Baby. Exactly. Like, that's the thing. I was going to say, there's two things. There's not enough Sharon in it, for one thing. There should be way more Sharon Tate in it. And I think she was... Um, she was underused, definitely. You know, she she could have been, and I don't know how. Just we needed more of her, you know. And yeah, I, I can see that. I can see that. I, Roman barely he has barely any lines in the whole movie. He does. He barely has any actual spoken lines. If you notice, I think maybe in the third act, so to speak, when they're right. in the, the mansion, he starts speaking a bit more. But in those first like forty to sixty minutes, like he he doesn't speak. 
And so I thought that was interesting. And and then the other thing is that like like you were saying about Rosemary's Baby coming up next in his in his uh, category, his catalog rather. And it's I think that's too what makes it hard to like like this movie a lot because I know about his other films and, it's and this like is you after can't, he did those movies like you can't you know, compare Repulsion and everything exactly. so you know he's like, great you already know, you know he's great and so it's hard to not look at it and not be like yeah but i wish i was watching rosemary's bear i wish i was watching chinatown or because mm-hmm. those movies are so fucking epic they're su- such big pillars and cornerstones in the american and new this wave, movie did make say, me you know? laugh a little bit though you know it was funny, yeah. is a really good you know who's from the exorcist who died during the making of the exorcist he's almost oh, famous shit. for that he's uh yeah wow. he plays a director in the movie that ellen burston is starring in and he ends up uh because she's oh an shit you're movie. right yeah you're so right. he dies and during the making of that but he's great in this i thought i mean he's, he's made, the He's, he's the, the old main man, star. Right? He's the old he's man. Jack yeah. McGor- McGor- what was his name? Jack McGoran. Uh, Jack McGowan. Yeah. McGowan. Yeah. He's this great. Movie's, it's um. What I I saw it on TCM and the the host of it that that let it in. You know, was talking about it and said that um that Roman Polanski said that he what they were going for was sort of a spoof or a send up of the mm-hmm. old um Hammer horror films. Yeah, it and felt so when, like a Hammer horror film yeah, a little a yeah, lot. When, yeah. When I when I heard that as part of the intro, it helped me get into it. I would say it gave me like sort of points of reference to understand like well, why is this shit happening? You know, <laughs> like what's going on <laughs> again? Because I just because you can't untangle the man from his other uh, from his other work, you know. And mm-hmm. I think for some people, that's why it's hard to talk about him or Woody Allen because you can't really talk have a conversation. It's like I I think it's impossible to have a conversation about these two guys without mentioning you know, the big sort of clouds over their lives. Sure, <laughs> sure. Know? And I think you can talk freely about it. That's why I always say it's anything so in the spirit that, yeah. of movies, I think we but have this the movie, freedom to talk about. This movie, just like Manhattan, features the, these these guys in the movies as lead. So I think they're unique and they're interesting sort of like windows into their, their processes, you know, because these two guys really never, I guess maybe Woody, in, in the set in the seventies, he was starring in a lot of his own films, but as we all know, we, you know, he eventually just kind of, you know, stopped acting altogether. And he was and a character himself, Woody Allen, like exactly, a famous yeah. character where Plansky just yeah. gave it a shot a few times and kind yeah, of yeah. successfully, you know, I mean, the tenants, like think, my favorite Plansky movie, I, actually, I think, it's fucking great. I think that he didn't have many lines or speak much because I think, wasn't he still kind of like figuring out English at the time? Like, I think he was still like, I don't think he was confident in like having all the lines in English for himself. You know what I mean? I figured it was just the screenplay. They went with like kind of that just more sophisticated comedy and and just to Mm -hmm. do it with action. And I mean, this is like, I watched it last night. And it was like the third time I've seen it. And the first couple of times it was, you know, I, I liked it, but I didn't think much of it. This time I caught myself laughing a few times, yeah. just little subtle you, jokes. Um, you see what I mean, though? He doesn't like Roman himself. His character doesn't really have lines like not much. I, Tell everybody what happens yeah. is him and Jack McGowan's character. They show up at this castle where. Yeah. Sharon Tate it's, had. It's, so it's very like it's the Frankenstein, I mean, not the Frankenstein, the Dracula story, maybe kind of meets the Frankenstein story. And so um these two show up on a, a horse drawn carriage and which is funny arrival. Dead of winter. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's the dead of winter. And the, both Roman Polanski and, and I, I forget his character's name, Jack McGowan's character. I forget the character's name. They're as well. both on the they're, they're like it looks like they're on a sled, you know, and they're they're you know burrowing through the snow. And they finally get to this little inn or this kind of like. Well, no, that tiny... comes a little bit later. Remember, they're being taken from a horse carriage to the castle at the beginning. And you think Jack McGowan's character is dead because ever he's just frozen. That's right. Yeah, that's what I say. He, <laughs> they show up and he's frozen and won't move. And they have to like bring him down and defrost him and Roman. So what, what was that place? I thought that was kind of like an inn where they because that's where Sharon yes. Tate was and she's kind of like a, a milkmaid or like a wench yeah you know? well her yeah she's it's like there's a pair there's a there's a couple there who has their children who basically tends to the people and stuff mm-hmm. like that and and yeah it's like a flop house then maybe yeah then the one I, I guess I don't know if they're both his daughters I think I know Sharon Tate is and then the other girl he keeps sneaking into her room remember like mm-hmm. the husband I mean there's yeah. like little things that made me laugh this there time two, that yeah. I didn't even catch the first time or a couple times around like it wasn't quite it was like slapstick yeah it was like a mix between like physical and slapstick comedy you know they're like 
they would they be walking very British, and, and you know for they'd a be walking director. and like <laughs> you know they'd be walking and the the vampire that they're running from would be right in front of them and then they turn around like they didn't see him and then they look over their shoulder and oh no oh wow there he is. you know it was very that yeah, like, yeah. Very, oh yeah yeah absolutely not Benny Hill, but yeah very english very english not quite benny hill that's a little older than i think uh, laughing that's what i was gonna say it was very like laughing that yeah, it definitely humor. had like a, you know, it's definitely a light, light comedy. Like, I, I didn't I, really feel like it was a horror vamp, and even a vampire. No, not I at feel all. Like it was a simple little like British comedy yeah. almost from a Polish you, guy. <laughs> you know what I thought was funny, right? You know what I thought was funny was I felt like this this movie could have been like a TV show or a TV movie with a laugh track on it almost it, it kind of some of the scenes <laughs> reminded me of like not the monsters but yeah maybe kind of like the monsters or even like bewitched you know because that one's in color where it's like they're in the scene and it's kind of like physical and and somebody takes a tumble and somebody slips on something and and so yeah like what i thought was interesting was so the vampire that they're like there to hunt, that's the guy who shows up and not kills, but converts or bites. Yeah, Sharon he's Tate. the he's the main vampire in, yeah. in the movie. And and remember, he has a son. He has a gay son. Oh, the gay son. <laughs> <laughs> so and, I, and, 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 and the guy's name is Ferdy Main. I, I know the actor. I forget the name mm-hmm. of his character. He's Count That something. one was hilarious. I thought that one was funny. Oh, the Roman son Bull- is great. The, the guy, yeah. it, it's it's really funny. Yeah, so they so they're like making their way through this inn, sort of like this like it's like a flop house, right? And it's kind of like all underneath. In other words, like they're like the groundlings, ground level people underneath <laughs> something. I don't remember what it was, but like the vampire that they're running from or or trying to catch, rather, he like opens a oh, and Sharon Tate is obsessed with bats. Her character is obsessed with taking a bath. And I guess it's yeah. because like they're poor, right? And and she tells him how somebody took her one day and and ma- and let her take a bath in their in their their bathtub and i guess that that's like they're so poor they don't want her wasting that much water maybe i don't know but they're like i just they, think they're, polanski wanted her in a tub and exactly, naked as much as exactly. possible exactly yeah, this I was is thinking. this is the time i was like that was, was really creative girl, you know right before was, she was that was actually a really creative re- i remember that was that caught my attention because i was like wow that is that's pretty creative because it like gave her a reason to be like no i i love getting naked in this bubble bath she's in the fucking bubble about like three times in this movie oh yeah and they and show as she, much as they can that they can oh, get yeah. away with you know which so. isn't much i'll be honest it's not much. much i mean you catch like a half second of a nipple or something like it's definitely yeah. not much yeah but you know it was like a zany vibe you know it had that kind of like um a little bit like an updated three stooges kind of vibe to its humor you know and and so mm-hmm. these guys are like bumbling they're or bungling they're bum- bungling i guess they're just kind of like they're making all these mistakes and they finally once sharon tate's character gets bitten and taken from them you know yeah. like taken from to the castle then it kind of moves from there to not there's something where do they go before they went to the the castle I feel well, like they, they went somewhere. Oh, it's from uh, they just left from the beginning of the movie. They got taken to the place directly. Remember the opening? Okay. They're and just you know what? I'm, I meant to tell you it was, I don't know, maybe I'm too stoned or something, but at the very, very, very <laughs> beginning of the movie, right? When, yeah. when Roman and Jack McGowan are, are on that sled and they're riding in the snow and the cold and both their faces are really like, you know, pinched and cold yeah. and red. If you pause it and look at Roman Polanski in that like one quick scene, he looks exact i'm talking doppelganger in the face he looks exactly like ruth gordon i i was like oh my god is that ruth gordon i I swear to god for a minute oh i can see that i can see that i never seen this movie before so at the very beginning when they're coming through the sled and they just this sliver of roman's face because he's all bundled up you know and i swear to god i thought oh shit ruth gordon's in this i didn't know and then i was like wait a minute that's polanski that's just good old roman so weird yeah. You know, for me, the, the scene stealer of the movie, though, was the dad, the innkeeper guy. Mm-hmm. He, he yeah. was definitely the best one. He was the, he had yeah. all the good moments and the funniest parts. Yeah, I like, and like I, I thought that the, the villain himself, you're right. Like it wasn't like a full horror movie. You know, it was kind yeah, of like no. light British horror, you know. And, yeah. And uh, which I think is what. Hammer right. It could have been a half hour TV for, show you know? in in Britain with a laugh then. track right with a, yeah. with a good laugh track especially during like some of the scenes where they're all dancing so so oh the dance know. the dance was yeah, my favorite so, part <laughs> okay so you know act one act two are over there at the castle right okay so but Sharon Tate's being Sharon dragged Tate's around missing, like, weekend at Bernie's and so uh he keeps looking for her and they keep you know it's like that that kind of uh 
that kind of skit in a, in a sketch show where like they keep opening doors and they keep looking, oh, nothing in there. And they open another door and, they, and like they open another door and it's like, oh, there's the monster. <laughs> like there's, and they just keep going, nothing in there, open the next one. They're like, whoa, wait a minute. Like that. And they kind of, you know, they stumble upon, it's like all of the vampires that this main vampire has converted, I, I would say. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, and before, but before that, we, yeah, we meet the main vampire's gay son. He's like, he's a vampire. And so, what's his name? he's i don't know i don't Ian? remember yeah i think so and and so yeah i can't he, remember son there's a there's a speech with the main vampire that he says how like you guys are gonna stay me talking to to roman polanski and jack mcgowan he's like you, don't worry you guys are gonna stay here you're gonna love it uh so and so is gonna love you know jack mcgowan char- character and my son here the gay the gay vampire he's like he's taking a real liking to you to like roman polanski <laughs> telling him how he's gonna be his toy and this and that i was like oh shit that shit was funny yeah <laughs> that was fucking funny because he, he he was kind of like a zombie he was just kind of like you know right um, right and and he was like supposed to be a blonde pretty boy so i thought that was really funny and they encounter this big like party and they're all dressed in you know like uh, period costumes but they're all dead like they're even sharon tate they're all like dead vampires so they've all got that really i thought the makeup and costumes were really good right right for that Especially and they go like there to say the say they break into the party to say yeah. Sharon Tate and uh, which is like a really funny ending to how they work it all oh, out. Oh yeah, well, I mean, the very very ending. It, we can give that away soon, but but um, yeah, no. So so they, I think, don't they put makeup on themselves and they they kind of go out there and act like they're dead vampires too, and they they start dancing. Yeah, that's my favorite they part start, when they're dancing with everybody. Yeah, they, it's like a minuet or whatever that dance was from back in the day. Where like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, you know, okay, now you go down the line and you're like, okay, now I'm dancing with you. And then they keep going. It's down like a Barry line, Lyndon they do that. It's great. It's very, yeah, yeah. And so all of them are dead vampires and uh, Jack McGowan and, and woman's character. They've got all the makeup on and they're dressed in, in the period. And so they, they finally get a hold of Sharon Tate's character and she's kind of like half out of it. She's basically like a zombie herself, but, and they go through the rules of like how to stop these vampires, like earlier in the film, anyway, that somebody explains to them, you got to use a stake to the heart, you know? Yeah. And so, um, they get her and they're able to like take her out of the ballroom, but they notice all of the vampires who've been dancing and stuff, they stop and they notice that he's taking her, that both these guys are taking her. And what I thought was really cool was like, they're like, okay, get her. You know, they're like, you know, go like, like how like in a, a war movie where, where both sides finally say, you know, attack and they go. So finally all the vampires come after them. And then Roman and, and Jack McGowan's characters, they, they make a cross out of these two um, swords. And it's like a cross is like a piece of garlic. You know, it's like a cross that repels them and they don't come any closer and they're able to get away. I thought that was cool. Mm-hmm, I thought that was mm-hmm. really cool how they make like a, yeah, like a cross and it stops them, you know, or at least temporarily while they can get away. And so they get away. And then what, tell tell them what happens at the like the very last. Oh, moment it's just a great little. Uh, of they've course, we're spoiling it, but you know, yeah. you can watch it. <laughs> but it really doesn't even matter. It's just you almost you know it's yeah. coming the whole time because she did get bit earlier, well, but she didn't actually I, transform yet. Yeah, but and she actually I actually. Gets- was that? I thought it was good. It, it surprised me. No, tell no, tell it. Oh, I, I so liked it. he's it was sitting in the, they're they're going off in the carriage at the end. Jack McGowan. The same one they arrived in. It, yes, and they're he's driving off. So the three of them are riding off, but uh, she ends up biting Roman in yeah. the back and starts turning him to a vampire. Jack McGowan has no idea. They ride off, but then a voiceover comes the and voiceover, talks about yeah. that he has no idea that he's actually unleashing the vampire yep. plague into the world. And so yeah. this is the beginning of how vampires, in the end, this becomes a tale of how vampires came into mm-hmm. the world is because of these two idiots <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> trying to save a girl. So it, it's funny. Yeah. It was good. I, like I said, I actually was surprised by it. I, I I don't know why I didn't see it coming because I think I thought that like, oh, well, she, you know, they're going to save her. They're going to like save her or do whatever, you know. And I could tell, though, because like I said, she's like real, real like lifeless, you know, and she's it's it is. It's I thought it was a surprise because, like I said, she's real lifeless and, and just kind of laying there as they're taking off. And then yeah. all of a sudden she just kind of and he's he's not even expecting it. You know, he's totally like got his neck exposed and everything. And then she just all of a sudden, ah. Ah, you know yeah he probably <laughs> you know he probably just wanted her to, to, to nod his neck for a little bit <laughs> he's, he's wrote all you? this shit in last second probably how old are you again not you're too old <laughs> <laughs>
So yeah, that's she so was mean. with uh I guess she was during that time she was with Jay Sebring and then that's mm-hmm. when she broke up with Sebring to be with uh Polanski. I would have stayed with Jay Sebring just for the haircuts, okay? Just for the fucking hairstyles alone, I would have stayed with Sebring. Yeah, I would have yeah, ended out better probably. Yeah, probably. Um, which you know, that's what I was gonna say is this movie, I would say if it had more oh. That's, oh, you know what we should actually talk about is the movie itself had some major disputes and and differences between the final cut that the producer, Martin Ransahoff, who I guess he discovered Sharon Tate. And yes, the story goes, right. The the story goes that Roman didn't want Sharon Tate for this movie, but that he says later that he was just kind of like playing hard to get, you know, or he was, he knew he liked her like that. And he just was like, no, I I get somebody else. Like he was just, he's just playing a game. with Yeah. According to the, the, the big goodbye book about Chinatown, mm-hmm. when he first met her, right, he didn't want her. But after they first met, like face to face, she kind of mm-hmm. won him over. He probably she just fell in love with her the moment said, he saw her. It said in the, the trivia about it that she came over to dinner with him at his place and he was like, OK, uh, I'll be right back. And he left her alone for like a few minutes. And she finally was like, what the hell's going on? And he came he like came out and surprised her, but scared, you know, trying to scare her and her scream in that moment was what won him won him over i guess so he was able to scare her and (laughs) and she was able to show him like what how she acted in real fear but you know that's his that's what he says about it but what i thought was interesting was um i guess on its release or shortly before the producer Rantahoff, he had like 15 or so 15 or 20 minutes cut from Roman's version of the film. Correct. Yeah. So and, talk about that for he, a second. This yeah. version, uh, they, they kind of gave him a butcher job because he left yeah. to come to America and left the film with the producers. They even changed yeah. the opening title sequence too. I was going right? to say, they, they changed the title. It. They added, yeah. And they it added like the an title. animated, they changed, the they changed the title. Yeah. It was called like the dance of the vampires and they changed it to you know killers of the fearless vampires and yeah what i I thought it was interesting was like yeah they i like the fearless vampire killers actually that's a better name i think so because the dance the dance was kind of weak you know it's going yeah yeah but no i have the blu-ray and it doesn't have that I was going to say, have you, in there. I haven't seen I, that. Yeah, I saw it on YouTube, actually. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I watched it on TCM. It literally, you know, we were talking about the other day and it just kind of randomly it came up and I recorded it. And that was where the, you know, the, the Ben Mankiewicz, the intro is it and, and talks about that. And, and he had said that, um, yeah, that, that, uh, he didn't want her at first and, and that, uh, the oh, we okay. had a, a totally different vibe, and it was almost like it ruined the storyline. The way that that the producer Ransahoff had had kind of butchered it, and so they were able, I guess, in England to save a version that was Romans that had all of the missing footage. Obviously, take out the animation thing because there was a tiny bit of animation at the beginning. What I saw, yeah, was there's, the a version, there's a little the bit. There's a little director's yeah, cut, right? But I guess there was a lot more uh, animation on there. You know, yeah, it's a little cartoon. I mean, it's a straight up cartoon. You'll see it's on YouTube. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, and you know, when I saw that that bit of trivia, it it reminded me of like when we talked about Porgy and Bess, for example, where mm-hmm. you have this, you have everything, all the ingredients for a great film. But there's some kind of issue with somebody who has final cut. Somebody, the person who has like the final say over something, like with Otto Preminger, he made the decision not to do any close-ups just to spite Dorothy Dandridge, just to spite her. Mm-hmm. He didn't do a single close-up, and we saw the result of that. That movie was abysmal because yeah. of that. You couldn't really. There was no connection with anybody, and so I would like to think that the edits that the producer made, you know, were that's what they said was they made it terrible, and that Roman's version is so much better. Yeah, and I don't know say. how restored of a version that we get to watch yeah. now because, I mean, they, you know, who knows how much footage they had. Mm-hmm. He had to, to, to recut the movie back with. So when would he, <laughs> I can't believe I'm like going back to the the this, the lurid no, we can about talk it. about anything so, we want. Then, where, <laughs> so I'm like, well, I, when did he have time to fit in the rape scene the, the, for <laughs> with Sharon? Well, you know, I they, never heard about that. And okay, so when the, you say against her will, it was like an an act, right? They were they were acting like he, yeah, another yeah. right, like it wasn't like he, somebody really came in and, and no, did that to her. No, it was like so he, it was a set, probably. I don't it. know. Wow. I don't know. Honestly, obviously, I don't yeah. know, but it's it, it's no, it was two people Roman got to have sex with Sharon. She probably didn't want to. And yeah. Roman kind of forced it to happen and filmed it. And, um, you wow. know, they they. Wow. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, he was, I, I mean, th- he was cheating on her the whole time. Even after the murder, he was still like, I mean, he was banging chicks, I think, like, yeah. the day after she got murdered, you know? And he oh, admits yeah. it. He's just like, I'm fucking nuts. I'm free. You know, he's a sex freak. And that's, the, you know, well, he yeah. didn't do it. He just, he's just a crazy guy. But yeah, man, it's it's wild. I mean, it's, it's totally yeah. wild. That's why watching, like, Chinatown, it's like, you know. Oh, man. Remember we went to see Chinatown in yeah, the theater yeah, recently. So I think that was of, fucking yeah. dope. That was so yeah, good. Yeah, great I, watching never, that in the theater. Yeah, I'd never seen that one in a, in a theater, and I thought that was so cool that they'd have those kind of like uh, revivals of them at a at a mainstream theater, you know. And it was uh, Diane Ladd who said, because um, mm-hmm. she was she had that small part. I had sessions in in mm-hmm. Chinatown, and she said that when Roman was positioning her body, he was kind of doing her in the pose of Sharon's body oh. from the crime scene. Oh, so that's man. fucking like the guy. I mean. You just don't Ooh. know what a twist is. Like I said, since like a five-year-old kid, you don't know what's yeah. going on. Not excusing anything, but you don't you know what's going see, on in his mind. You know what I will say too, with vampire killers, you can see a lot of, because did you say, where did does this film fall in, in relation to Rosemary's Baby? Where, this came right before Rosemary's Baby. So before, he did Repulsion, okay. Knife That's in the why. Water. So he was already so, like a real respectable director. He does this comedy. It's not well received, but it's obviously well crafted. Yeah. But he goes off to, you know, America right yeah, now, so right during this and does it. There's a lot of like flourishes and a lot of touches and a lot of sort of like motif. Like there was a lot in Vampire Killers that you can tell he must have learned or he must have picked up, so to speak. And there's a lot of similar lighting and like composition of things and like kind of the, yeah, the DP of this film. Um, you can tell the stuff from this film that ends no, up. He, also being yeah, in he Rosemary's did. Baby. He, he I forget his name. He did like all the uh, device. The, yeah. Yeah. Look it up. He did all the, the, yeah. the whatever they're called. Indiana Jones movies. Mm-hmm. And he did quite a few big American movies. This guy, he was, um, I forget. I think he was a French. I'm You're not talking sure. about the production designer? No, the or... actual cinematographer of the, of the movie. Oh, for uh, Vampire Killers. Yeah. Are you looking it up? <laughs> yeah, I am. Fuck yeah. No, I'm going to look that up. Your list, Vampire. And you know what? As I'm pulling this up, they did an ad for some fucking Meg Ryan and David Duchovny film. Of course Jesus there is. Christ, give me a break. Just kidding. That's so mean. <laughs> Meg Ryan, no. <laughs> The cinematographer, it, Douglas Slocum. That's it. Yeah, Slocum is that his name? Slocum. Yeah, that's it. He, um, no, Douglas he did a lot of a lot of movies. Bar. Let's see. He did uh, Roller Bar, Jesus Christ Superstar, The Great Gatsby, the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah, I knew he did. He did yeah, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. He did uh, Pirates of Penzance. Let's see. The Lady Vanishes. Julie. Oh yeah. Well, he did Julia. Did a lot of shit. So yeah, he. You know, he had a lot of uh, of good talent around him making this. You know. Yeah, Plansky was always known for knowing the camera very well. A lot of DPs yeah. always said that he knew the camera uh, better than most directors, like Cooper. Wow. Cooper knew the camera, knew lenses, did, all that stuff. This guy went on to do Boom, which Boom with an exclamation point. That's the um, the Richard Burton and, and Elizabeth Taylor film, which was like supposed to be a nightmare. He did The Lion awesome. in Winter, the one with Catherine Hepburn, uh, The Italian Job, Murphy's War. Jesus Christ, superstar. That's the one he did. <laughs> Jesus Christ, superstar. He just died too, 2016. How interesting. No, hell of a hell of a career, obviously. So no, it's good. Yeah, he had a lot of a lot of good people around him. And I, I like this movie, you know, because it's not the yeah. standout one. Again, like I said, my tenants, the tenants of my favorite Polanski acting I've movie. It might be my that. favorite movie yeah. altogether that he's made. But that. I remember I told you that there is a video store here up in Portland now. Well, it's been here for a while. I guess it was probably a video store forever. And just as it was like crumbling in its business, it got saved or preserved or bought by this nonprofit, which is another like local theater. And like they it's just like an old blockbuster, but even better. They've got like really niche films. Oh, nice. And, and yeah, and yeah you relocated tenants. up yeah, north. I moved up you to can Portland, let everybody maybe. know. Yeah, up in Portland now. So we've had Portland, you on for a couple of weeks. Yeah, I've missed coming on, man. I'm, I'm like, damn, I want to get. You know, I wanted to tell you. Video. I wanted to tell you something. I've totally forgot. So, remember yeah. last episode? I think we did together was Oppenheimer. It was Oppenheimer, yeah. So, we remember we were making fun of Josh Josh Safdie's eyebrows. Yes. So that, like, literally a couple days later, I'm watching a documentary on Oppenheimer and like the actual Oppenheimer, uh-huh. and they they interviewed the guy that Safdie played, and he had these giant eyebrows. Ta-da! I just lost oh, it laughing. Shit. I was like. Like, oh, 
<laughs> oh, okay. I take it back. I take it back. It oh, I eyelashes. thought it was funny that though. Was his, eye, oh, his eyelashes too. That's what it was with Gav Safdie. I was like, oh. Oh man, that shit is hilarious. But I thought that was great. That's but funny, that's hilarious. Yeah, but yeah, no, I think people should go check this one out if you know Plansky because mm-hmm. it's his really only. Uh, well, not his only. He did a few kind of comedies, but it's his most famous, yeah, like you know, offbeat I one. I would, I would argue he really didn't do any more comedies. Well, but no, you know, well, he, I could be wrong. <laughs> he did a couple. He did a couple, but they were like, yeah. I mean, you know, I'd have to look. Comedy up Comedy wasn't his lane. Comedy was not his lane. He was totally much not. But he did a couple drama. in his in his career. He did do a couple in his career. Brooding drama is is his forte, in my opinion. Brooding drama, like plucking hair brooding. out of Faye Dunaway's head, <laughs> is what he does oh, best. Shit. That was the best. <laughs> and she never forgave him. She was like, oh, that was it for her. She lost her shit. And that was so awesome of a story. But I, 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 I say the same thing for, you know, Plansky, as I would say for Woody Allen, when it comes to like a lot of people in Hollywood current that that bash yeah. him. It's like, where were you 20 years ago when you could have said something? I mean, it's not like th- yeah. it, this shit just happened with him. Yeah. You know, he's been happily married now for like over 20 years as a family. So if everyone hated him, they should have hated him the whole entire time. I, yeah. I just that's yeah. the only thing with me. It's, it's like it is. It, we're very selective when we get mad. Yeah. No, it, and it's strange because, well, and Woody Allen... What, and his wife, the interview with Oscar. her recently, did you see that? Plansky's Ooh, wife so interviewed oh, her. Oh, no. Yeah, he no, interviewed the girl who was, I forget her name, who was the victim. She's obviously grown oh, now. That, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and her, she's she, like, I'm done with it, you know, and she's yeah, totally forgiven like, him. She, yeah, I was going to say, she forgave him in writing and in, and, and officially, I think she like, asked, she like asked for her complaint to be withdrawn or something like that. Yeah, like, She was yeah. very official. And very specific because she gets the she worst wasn't. of it she's the only real yeah. like it's and people keep talking about it she's oh it's over it's it happened like almost 50 yeah. years ago to her yeah. she's fucking done you know i feel bad for her yeah. that they still talk about it but here we are talking about it so exactly <laughs> hey man hey what are you uh, gonna do man what, what are you gonna, gonna do? do yeah there's so many things i'd love to love to talk to you about and um are, are, on, don't be shy don't be shy <laughs> do you hate certain members of uh the press for the way the uh, you were treated after your wife's murder? Well, yes, to be honest, I do, but I wouldn't call it a hatred now. You see, some somehow evolved to uh, just indifference, and I simply don't read it and try to avoid it. Yeah. You, uh, you didn't. I just wondered, is, is there any way, I don't know what you think people deserve to know or how much business people have knowing about uh, a thing like the... Uh, what's called the Sharon Tate case, uh, although there were a lot of other victims. Um, Is there anything good that has been written about it? I know this sounds silly, but I mean, is there a book or is there anything that you would recommend for people who wanted? Well, I just don't read, I'm sorry. I don't read for my own good. Yeah. And uh, it's possible, it would be silly of me to say that absolutely everything written by the press is obnoxious. And this is impossible. The press is too broad. I mean, I'm philosophically oriented uh, this way that I know that there are always mutants, you know, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> the principle of life and evolution. So there must be some flukes. But yeah. in general, I despise the press tremendously for its inaccuracy, for its ir- irresponsibility, mm-hmm. and for its uh, uh, often even deliberate c- cruelty. And all this, it's for lucrative purposes. It's almost impossible to run into anyone and in the movie community who doesn't claim to have some inside knowledge of the event. Do you know what I mean? No. Uh, er, er, anytime the subject comes up out there, people all oh, claim to have, they, they know something that never came out in the papers and it's never the same thing, it's always something else. Oh yeah, well. There's the way people descend on an event like that is sort of strange. Well, this is part of human nature. I mean, I was accused of being one of the complices, you know. Yeah. By even, uh, People who I, sh- I thought were well willing to, but uh, it was like a great uh, 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 s- psychological test, like psych- great psychoanalysis. I could see that everybody saw it from his angle, you know, his point of view, and was look- looking for the culprits in the area which would be somehow related to the way he was thinking. You know what I mean? I don't want to be more specific about it.